Hi, it's me. Um, this is the first video for our second week of the class. So, and this class is the microeconomic theory course from the Department of International Trade. So I was wondering if you guys are still safe and healthy enough to come back to school after April 6th, which is the targeted date from the school HQ for the face-to-face -face class begin again. Um, I hope to see you guys around that time, but I'm not 100% sure if we can do that because you know, this pandemic situation is still spreading out and there is every day, every day there is a new um, patient who tested positive for the coronavirus in the Daejeon, Chungnam, Sejong area. So I think this is still cautious time and to make the, enough the social distancing. So this is not the right time to see you guys. But I don't know, maybe two weeks later, the situation may be getting better then we can see each other. So before getting the right and the correct information, then we have to have this type of you know, class for some weeks. And I heard the many complaints from the students because of, I think there are mainly two complaints. The first complaint was the inefficiency of this video online type the class. I totally agree with that. Um, I am realizing um, the quality of teaching is getting worse and worse as we doing these things again and again. And the other complaint is the uncertainty on our future plan um, because the school HQ determined just one week update for one more week of the coronavirus situation. So many students have trouble in having the future plan on their own um, schedule until the end of the semester. And I also totally understand what you are uncomfortable with the decision by the HQ. But I think uh, we have to understand this situation for two reasons. The first one is, um, the health is the most important for your for our life. Um, our term means the community, the family, the people around you. Uh, we are young enough, so I think we have the enough immune system against the coronavirus. So even if we have caught the coronavirus, we will be fine. We will be all right because we are strong enough. But uh, your grandmothers or your grandfathers may not be all right. Or if your cousin who is really young enough or some babies, they will be seriously dangerous if they catch the coronavirus situation. So we have to be independent of each other at this point, not only for you guys, not only for your own health, but also for your family, for your community and for our country the city so I think um, social distancing is strictly required at this point and we have to understand that and also the future plans uncertainty I think the HQ doesn't have you know power to decide the whole semester being under the online class because you know Chungnam National University is one of nine the main universities main public universities in South Korea and that nine public universities are strictly on the control of the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Education has really poor decision making so far on their own the elementary to high school situation or also the university plan so I think the main responsibility for this uncertainty problem is 
from the Ministry of Education, not for our school, because our school doesn't have enough power to control over that plan. So um, the only thing we can do is just waiting. So this is just waiting game. And I know you guys are really active and really, you know, smart guys. So waiting is boring sometimes, but sometimes waiting is the smart move at this point, maybe. So um, just let us keep going, you know. So as I already told you, um, this video is just supplemental purpose which means that you have to study by yourself with your own textbook or the other materials you can find out on the internet. So you can just study this lecture note by yourself. But if you don't understand some part of that, then you can use this video. And also, this video is used for your attendance rate. So you have to watch this video for sure. But I am trying to shorten the, the length of this video as much as I can because I know your concentration um, rate, I think, concentration power is pretty weak. So I think the 25 minutes are the maximum you can concentrate on this boring video. So yeah, I will just shorten the length of video as much as I can. So you can just watch this video and check your attendance, but you can just go to your own desk and start your own studying about the microchemic theory and we we'll meet at some point in this semester and we can have our own examinations to evaluate your understanding okay <clears throat> so uh, we have talked about the demand part the last time so we can talk about the opposite side in the market okay which is called the supply so um, the main economic agent who have to think about the supply is definitely the supplier, the seller in the market. So, um, in the capitalism economics, many economists assume that the supplier or the supply chain or supply part of the market is behaved by a firm. So firm is really important economic agent in one part and the consumer is another part of very important another part in the market so the consumer side and the supply side or farm side are the two most important economic agent in microeconomic theory part okay so um the purpose of the farm is really simple they want to make a money okay so if they can make money, then they can do anything. They can do that, right? So the money earning is defined by a profit, the positive profit. So making positive profit is the only purpose of the firm. So they have to think about several factors to maximize their profit. The first one is the cost of the production. So if you have the less cost for producing the same good, it would be better for you if we are a firm, right? So minimizing cost is the same problem with the maximizing profit. So it is called the duality concept in the microeconomics. The duality, D-U-A-L-I-T-Y. Um, the duality is defined by that the cost minimization problem is equivalent to the profit maximization problem for the firm economic agent, okay? And the other part that the firm has to think about their profit maximization is the government regulation. So government is kind of the external shock to a firm because a firm cannot control over the government regulation. So government is the third party in the market if there is any market failure situation happens, then the government will intervene in the market. So they will do something to improve the market market efficiency. Um, but in the point of view of the of firm, they are given that government regulation without any notice. So um, the government regulation is kind of the external shock to a firm side. 
So they have to think about what the government will do against them, and they have to anticipate the government regulation to protect their profit or to maximize their profit, right? So you know that my speaking is really slow. So I spent just 10 minutes to finish the first page of this video. So um, as the same with the demand part, uh, you should think about the quantity supplied. That's the point where we should determine to maximize our profit. Though. So if you decide how many goods or how much services you want to provide in the market, then you should definitely think about the quantity supplied. And the point of quantity supplied, which will be considered as optimal, will be the point where you can maximize your profit. Okay, so we'll talk about these things in detail in the later chapters. So you can just conceptualize the quantity supply part. Okay. So um, at each price level, then there is certain a quantity supplied you can supply in the market. And if you connect all the quantity supply point at every point of the price level, then there will be only one line or a curve which is called a supply curve okay so um it is really simple to assume that as price goes up then you want to supply more goods or services the reason is really simple assuming that the cost of production is fixed at the same level the price for your supplied good or services is increased, which means that your profit will be increased. So increasing price level for your good supply in the market is a good thing for you if you are a supplier. It is bad for the consumer side, but if you are think about the firm side, then increasing price for the same quality of good or services is a really good thing. So you want to supply more goods or services. Right, so it is called the law of supply. So, as the same with the demand part, uh, we can think about the movement along the curve and the shift of the curve. Right, so at the same price level in this picture, which is the two dollars per pound, we have a little bit more thicker red line and a little bit more less thicker uh, or a kind of pink um, supply curve. So we have two supply curves. So the initial point is here. So this is our starting point. Starting point. Sorry, I'm just trying to do my best with my mouse, which is, I know, really bad. But I'm trying my best like you guys. So um, in our original supply curve, um, which is called the S1 here, then at the price level of $2, then you can provide 80 units of millions of avocado or something. So anyway, so you can supply 80 units at the $2. But for any reason, so there are several factors that can affect your supply curve. We'll talk about later. For any reason, you can decide, okay, so I cannot supply 80 units of avocado anymore because my supply ability or supplying capability is reducing. So I'm going to reduce my quantity supply at the $2 per unit. So you decide to decrease your avocado supply from 80 to 69 at the same price level of the two dollars and your decision like this will be happen at every price level at every price level you will reduce or you will decrease the quantity supply so you can connect all the different points or all the changes the point then you can have another supply curve which is the decline of the supply curve or the s2
Okay. So this is the shift of the curve. And the shift of the curve is totally different from the movement along the curve. The movement along the curve is your corner supply will be changed along the curve like this and like this. There is no shift of the curve, but your corner supply will be changed with the change of price level. So if there is anything changed, if there is anything does not change it, but only the price of that good you supply is changing, then there is no shift of the curve. There will be the movement along the curve. But um, for all the other regions without the price of that good, like the price changes of your substitute or your complement, then it will affect your overall supply at the same price level. That in that situation, there is shift of the curve. Okay, so you should differentiate those two things. It is very important. Right. So also the supply curve is converted to um, a the form of function, which is called a supply function. So it's the same. And I think you know the definition of a function, okay? The function is kind of system. You have the input and you have output and there is something, some mechanism. So if you have any input in this mechanism, then you're gonna get the output with that mechanism. And the function is a kind of system. Um, so it is operate systemically from the output to the, sorry, from the input to the output. Okay, so um, in the equation number five, what is the dependent variable or the output? Which is important to clarify. So in our supply function, in the textbook, many economists think your corner supply is a dependent variable. So you will have specific number or specific unit of corner supplied with a certain system or mechanism, which is a function or called S in the supply function with some external factors you cannot control over, which is kind of price of your good or price of the other good. Okay. So, um, your quantity supplied will be affected by the price of good you want to supply and the price of other good, which is strongly related to the good you want to supply. And with some mechanism, a function, then you want to determine how many goods or services you want to supply in the market. So which is the definition of the supply function. Easy, right? So this is the example. So your quantity is applied or the Q in the equation number six will be determined by some constant, which is 58 plus 15 times the price of that good you want to supply negative 20 times price of the other good in this example, which will be a fertilizer. And the price of good you want to supply is the avocado. Have you ever eaten the avocado? I love that good because it is healthy food and it is not a meat. Um, I eat meat, but I'm trying to be a vegetarian um, as much as, ki as I can. So, sorry, no, the outside of my room is really, really noisy because there are how many people in my house right now? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six people are now living in my apartment, excluding me. It is unbelievable right now. Wow. So, um, I'm trying to concentrate on, but it's really hard with 
you know, six people living together with me. Crazy situation. All right, so we start with the equation six. And for the simplicity of the problem, then we can fix some part of that, uh, which means that the price of fertilizer, you don't sell the fertilizer, but the price of fertilizer is strongly related to your supply of avocado. But in this situation, the price of fertilizer is fixed as the 40 cent per pound. So equation number six will be reduced to equation number seven after submitting p app equal to 40 into the number six then you can easily calculate um, and find out the result of equation number seven and one information that i forget to provide you um you can drop this course out for any time within one month which means that if you feel any uncomfortable with this course or if you think this course is useless for your life then you can drop this course and i think this is the smart move rather than continuing your you know, dissatisfaction with this course um this course is strongly economics based course and i know many of you guys are weak in the mathematics or even many guys hate mathematics but I will use a lot of mathematics even though I believe the mathematics I will use in this course is strongly easy and you know this is easy for you guys too but if you still feel uncomfortable any part of this course and you think this course is hard for you or, or this course is boring for you then you should definitely drop this course out within a month uh, you have still a chance to cancel this course and i think it is definitely a smart move my recommendation is dropping out this course because this course is already full um more than 100 guys are you know taking this course and i think this is um not reasonable because you don't have to understand microeconomics in your life if you are interested in the economics then maybe this course will help you but uh, if you just want to graduate um, our university in the safe way then you don't have to take this course because this is not the required course for graduation so just think about it okay Okay, so um, it's the same. You can just sum up the supply curve. You can sum two or more supply curve and the way to adding up the supply curve is the same with the case of the demand part. Horizontally, you can just sum um, the quantity at the specific price level, okay? Like this, right? So you can just sum the Japanese supply and the foreign supply to all together and the way to sum up those two supply curve is the same it's really easy you can just start with this P on the bar and the P on the bar you know how many quantity supplied from the Japanese own company zero right and look at the same price level P on the bar and think about how many um, goods or so services provided by the foreign company, which is also zero, right? So zero plus zero is zero in any cases, right? So the same at the each price level, at each price level until the infinity then you can just add this quantity and you can just add at the same price level this quantity or maybe still zero in the case of the band situation here this is no band situation here then you can just add those two things 
or together, then you can get this the sum of the quantity supply. So the only thing you can remember is that if you want to add two supply curves, then you can firstly fix the certain price of it, and you can find out the quantity supplied in each supply curve, and you can just add those two quantities of supplies at that certain price of it, and you can just calculate over and over, then you can get the new supply curve. Easy, right? All right, all right, next page. I think you can just read all of this PT file by yourself and you don't need any explanations by Korean speaking the poor English. <sighs> okay, so this is practice problem. Practice problem is important for your exam because we don't have quiz. So, you know, who knows this practice problem will be appeared or will be in your midterm. Maybe or maybe not. Okay, so this is situation of the sugar market of the United States. Okay, so the United States government decide to set a quota. The quota means that um, a nation can set the specific quantity of imported good by the regulation, okay? So in this situation, um, the United States import the sugar abroad by amount of the Q, but if they set the quota by the Q bar here, then the American cannot import more than Q bar. The Q bar is the maximum amount of sugar the Americans can import set by the government of the United States. Okay. So we have the domestic supply curve SD in the United States. And also we have the foreign supply curve SF. So adding up SD and SF will the the total supply curve in the United States in the sugar market. But we have one restricted condition, which is the quota set by the United States. So let's draw out the supply curve. Funny. Okay, so um, this is the first graph. The panel A is the domestic supply curve of the sugar in the United States. So this is simply just textbook supply curve. And let's look at the panel B, which is pretty much problem problematic. So you have two supply curve, SF and SF bar. And SF was the original supply curve before quota set by the government of the United States. But SF bar is the new supply curve, which is set by the government regulation for the Q bar the quota. So the Q quota means that um, the quantity of sugar imported from the foreign country in the United States sugar market cannot exceed the Q bar. Okay, so before Q bar, there is no restriction. But after Q bar, there will be no more imported good. In this case, a sugar. So the new supply curve is draw out like like this, SF bar. Before QF bar, it is just you know, simple and the normal supply curve. But after QF bar, there is zero quantity imported from the outside of the United States. So it will be just a vertical line here. So you can just add SD. and SF bar to find out the total supply curve after the quota set by the government regulation. Then you can just you know, start with P bar. And at the price level of P bar, domestic supply is QD bar. 
And at the same price level, the P bar, the foreign supply quantity is the QF bar. So at the same price level P bar, the overall supply curve in the United States is the QD bar plus QF bar. Okay. And you can do the same thing at another price level like the P star or any other price level. Then you can find out another sum of quantities applied from the both sides. Okay, so the S bar is the overall supply curve in the United States after the quota. And S is the before quota supply curve. Okay, so we have two different supply curves here. You can practice by yourself because it is easy. Okay, so um, my mother-in-law now living together with me. Shit. All right, so I think I would like to stop here for our first part of the second week video, and I will upload the second video pretty soon. Okay, see you guys later.